Hello. Um, continued lecture on um, Dream Cities um, by Wade Graham as a introduction to um, urban planning typologies um, that we face for the past 200 years, mostly the past 100 years. Please excuse um, the shaking here. This is on my lap. Um, famous IKEA couch here. Um, and I want to proceed um, from the last lectures on um, from homesteads where we see the post-World War II sort of development of the suburban house. And in a sense, um, it is a fruition of the French Revolution and Immanuel Kant, uh, Rousseau, um, fraternity, liberté, égalité for all. Um, the rights of men, the, the capacity to exercise your freedom and individuality, yet it sort of terminates in the American suburb, a highly materialistic and often um, vacuous region that was about the detached house, the kingdom, the uh, little palace, the front yard, mimicking the gardens at Versailles, uh, every person a king and a queen, uh, the rigidified cisgender um, implied directives of the nuclear family, um, all of these things came to a very concerted formulated edge out of an agrarian society into an industrial society. We are now leaving that industrial side society much less for the fact that it had been exported to East Asia, starting with Japan, then Korea, and the, the, the dragon countries, now to China, now uh, sort of on a constant search for cheap labor, um, expanding in Vietnam, Indonesia, as they build a large middle class, mostly out of the numbers, was still quite an abject um, uh, industrial population. The fantastic movie Nomadland, which I gave a lecture on, was um, to many Americans very upsetting about a middle-aged woman living and traveling in her van for communion, but also as a response to the shutting down of um, the industry in her Utah home, I think, um, ironically named Empire. Uh, and we see a system of choices. Um, that movie I did enjoy because of the Chinese director included these interesting uh, uh, compare and contrast between Taoism and transcendentalism, American style transcendentalism, which is sort of a, a, a propels the individual and individuality out of the French Revolution to the notion that we are only made of nature, we are only made of biology. And the wonderful scenes in that movie of um, Francis McDormand in the wilderness, in the desert with compatriots looking for attention often between other people who have adopted this nomadic lifestyle after uh, uh, post-industrialism, but also um, the Taoist principle, which Lao Tzu was reputed to have been disgusted by um, the corruption of the city in, in I forget what this is, 5th century um, China, I think, and was going to leave town, enter the woods and disappear. And the legend has it, the night watchman or the gatekeeper said, hold on, I hear you are wise. Before you go, um, could you write some stuff down? And that led to the Tao Te Ching, and, which is a very slender book of, of binary relationships um, with, um, with nature and the nature within. The movie covered this concept that there is a nature within. Many Americans found the movie harsh. It did win Academy Awards for Best Director, I think Best Actress. Um, 
but it touched a nerve with many Americans because it is a response of choice with nature um, that we do live in a beautiful natural surrounding we do have beautiful nature within which is contrast to her working in this humongous seasonal Amazon warehouse as seasonal worker um, and nature is always on the forefront nature is always the sort of containment of ambitions and certainly the ambitions of the French Revolution looking for that final reduction into the freedom the free will of the individual but where is free will if your van breaks down as there was a scene in the movie your van breaks down and she's got the choice of you know, four thousand, five thousand dollars worth of repair on her home, or, um, as the mechanics advise, get a new car, um, get credit to get a new car. Sort of buying back into the corrupted system of, of making these choices. She chooses to borrow money from her sister, goes to visit her sister. Very, a very subtle movie, not not extremely complex, but. I contend that the subtlety is this blend, a natural blend between Taoism and transcendentalism, which comes out of German idealist traditions, Anglo natural responses, um, the French Revolution, uh, Rousseauian ideals that the natural person is one conditioned to li listen to nature and thus free. There's freedom in the great restraints of understanding there is a nature within. And that was kind of the message of the movie. Now, there, there is kind of a dichotomy between um, that movie and what it takes. And the larger themes of this class, sorry, moving again. Um, the larger themes of this class Surrounding a series of contradictions, we have that movie of post-industrial acceptance. She's working in an Amazon warehouse, supposedly with commodity items delivered all over the country on um, made in China, made in East Asia. Part of the problem, this consumerism is part of the, buying things you don't really need because the use value is suspect and we often talked about the loss of the cities during covid because i've seen on many bookstores in brooklyn don't box out local bookstores um very apt discussion of that that um rather than enter into your city because of covid and the fear of contagion you um are obsessively buying from amazon ebay Alibaba, I know I did to a certain extent, um, because we allowed the commodities to come to us. And this character, Frances McDormand, is a um, middle-aged woman with a dead husband. She followed all the cisgender narratives, presumably, of of a life with a partner, a man, uh, no children as I can tell, but she has a wonderful little moment of quoting um, Macbeth back and forth to some neighbor kid she supposedly tutored. Um, so there is a very subtle yet refined sense in her perhaps borderline depression. Um, I don't find it very depressive I think there's an arc but let's go back to contrast that with the suburbs as we came out of homesteads corals which is Jane Jacobs reaction to Robert Moses pushing post-war post-world war to America toward um, the car detached room as we talked about in the previous lecture um, putting poor folks people of color in slabs um, which are the mega housings and as I said I used to live in Seoul and Singapore and perhaps there's a sensibility of making and certainly in Hong Kong making do 
with a high density population and learning to find the edge of the skin as the edge of your identity. Everything outside of that, in a sense, belongs to the other, to the family, the extended family, the city, the citizens. I do often remember being daunted sometimes in the very crowded Seoul subways, not in Japan, but in Seoul, the ajumas, which are older women, sometimes grandmothers, would like bump into or check you like hockey players. I don't quite know what this was about, but um, it was part of the, the, the idea that these large city Seoul, second largest city in the world, would be a place place, at least for a Westerner walking through on my way to work through Seoul, that myself stops at my skin, um, certainly in public places. So let's go to the homesteads, which are we saw from Frank Lloyd Wright, and very idealistic, still Anglo-German Enlightenment ideals of the individual, the which are some of the founding principles of politics in this country, certainly out of Jefferson, but also out of the loose matriarchal society of the Seneca and Indians. A lot of um, our constitution comes in a direct response to, this, to the, the um, northern New York, and I think it's mostly Seneca, and I could be wrong, but they had a, a very egalitarian um, constitution um, and a lot of the founding um, f fathers and mothers of this country um, look toward the Native Americans for their response. Again, again, uh, I mean, we could say this is very close to Taoism. Look to these forms as saying we aren't entirely infinitely free. We have boundaries. Certainly in an East Asian city, there are boundaries um, to how far you can think you can take your individuality. Um, in America, the, the, the movie Nomadland covers these wide open spaces, but there are boundaries, there are corners, there are edges, certainly in time. Um, one of the drawbacks I found through this whole Zoom and asynchronistic existence is that there's an illusion of a boundary of time. Um, oh yeah, we can make people sit on their couches endlessly. I worked on a couple projects where it was just, it was just like a sewing circle or a glee club. It was it was endless, hearing other people's opinions of of themselves and having a reductio into minutia and phatic dis discussions. Phatic meaning just accepting contact with the other and not a lot of content. So as Bifo Barati said, that the, 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 with all of this telepresence stuff, the body is still a core fulcrum, a core empathetic truth center to, to what degree we can actually be online. And Nomadland, as a movie, really covers this notion of individuals from industrial cities in a sense of slow disaster. Most of these books, I mean these um, cities as outlined in this book, are models of industrial area, era cities, practically. And according to Architects Anonymous, which we will cover, um, we've come in this year 2020 which, according to Architects Anonymous 2010, was peak oil period, that within 200 years or less, we will have spent 500 million, er, million years of, um, of stored solar energy uh, within 200 years. No wonder the pollution and the excess. Um, there are a number of parts in motion here, I know, in this lecture, but keep in mind the French Revolution, conjoined with the American Revolution, the rights of the individual, and the rights of the individual to advance into even a confrontation, a confrontation with nature, 
certainly a confrontation of nature within the other American Indians, which had to be liquidated, um, which is a shameful tradition, but within the Rousseauian, even Kantian dialogues, there's a reluctance to perceive the other who does not maintain these French Revolution ideals of maximizing will and, um, and bearing and, and so forth to the ends of, of personal, in the American sense, material success. Again, Nomadland. She's left with her van. Uh, and the van's breaking down. And she's doing seasonal Christmas labor with Walmart. And she's in the middle of the beautiful desert of the Southwest. And she's with a group of people who talk about the need for communion in this fact, the need to realize we have spent our resources. Again, in the early lectures, we currently spend 10 calories of petroleum to extract one calorie of food. Um, this is untenable. And according to Architects Anonymous, will lead to the decline of um, these alpha cities like Seoul, like Tokyo, like New York City. Three days, according to that rule, three days of stored food should some catastrophe happen. Under COVID, we had a slow catastrophe. Under the conditions of the movie Nomadland, it was a slow catastrophe. Um, um, so that's a couple things in play. The French Revolution, ideals of individuality. We joke about snowflake individualism as kind of the, the meaningless, final, fragile, vulnerable differentiation of the French Revolution ideals of the individual, often at the expense of the group. Uh, we have a mitigation of that in meeting with other cultures, largely East Asian cultures, as the Chinese has, have constructed the largest industrial revolution in the face of the planet, which happened in the 90s, in which there was wholesale um, emptying of the agricultural sector to the coastal big cities for industry. This happened in a similar way in America, happened in Europe, starting with England and France, and then Germany and America were competing at the same time for their brand of uh, industrial ascendancy, um, largely at the expense of agriculture, but petroleum delivered the food to these growing cities and um, because of the internal combustion engine and tractors and agricultural machines, there was a greater productivity. We now approach these levels of factory farms and Monsanto and, and cruel and barbaric sort of um, harvesting of animals uh, to a certain extent. But the industrial revolution in this country happened with these large paroxysms and crises. Um, the largest was uh, 1929, the stock market crash, but already the, uh, the balance sheets toward agriculture was always, already depleting by uh, 1925, after the post-World War I boom of armament production. So we have another moving part of war production as a way of controlling um, uh, economies, the necessity for global wars, into the Great Depression. And of course, as a behavioral economist myself, that led to World War II. So in a sense, World War I did not end, at least for America's challenger, Germany, for ascendancy in terms of the new industrialism coming from a largely agricultural country. A um, little anecdote, uh, one of my grandfathers, born 1908, um, was a victim of this 
had a farm in the Mississippi River Valley, um, was farming successfully with his family, inherited by his family, owned a hardware store in the small town. And then after the great depression or the stock market crash of 29 in which this house of cards came down much like the 2008 um, fiasco and these pump and dump schemes in financial markets affecting real things such as agriculture and industrialism and certainly service industrialism and speculation toward real estate he lost the farm uh, fortunately because of the hardware store and the farming he had taught himself how to weld, and from that went right into a factory on the outside of outskirts of Chicago in Beloit, Wisconsin, and began to weld diesel engines for trains and submarines. Um, he tells a story of middle 30s, late 30s, going up to his foreman as he's welding submarine, submarine parts, war material, um, asking his foreman, saying, what's up with these, uh, we're in the middle of a depression, what's up with the submarines? What are, what are we doing? Um, we, we have engines for trains, and, and I think they even welded um, engine parts for tractors. Uh, and the foreman, kind of as a cognizante, just turned to him and said, watch 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 what will happen so even back then uh, the population was acquainted with these types of pump and dump um, economic um, sufferings that they were going through in a larger um, sense um, in um, D the removal of the agrarian sector to the city's industrial sector, which had been going on co-committant with Germany since the 1880s in New England, since before the Civil War, Civil War gave it a jump start. The Prussians